Hi everyone, my name is Tim Kitson, and I'd like to present my research for EDTL 6380, the seminar on classroom technology and learning for a master's degree in classroom technology. My research focused on audio-based feedback for student writers. My research question was, do students perceive audio-based feedback as more useful than written feedback? I wanted to know if, if, if students valued feedback more when audio is the vehicle of delivery. And I got this idea because I learned that in 2020 alone, Apple sold more than 110 million AirPods, the little white ear headphones with no cords. Those are very popular among students at my high school. Many of them wear them as a status symbol. And it got me thinking, how can audio be used as an educational tool more so than it is right now? As an English teacher, I was very focused on writing. So I took a deep dive into the literature, first about writing and then more about audio. Whitford in 2018 reported on a survey of 1,140 college students in the United States, which revealed that students didn't think they needed any spelling or grammar help, and a slight majority of students said they had no need for any additional instruction. These primarily were undergraduate students at a university who felt they had peaked. There was no longer any need for writing instruction. And I think at least English teachers everywhere would look at that with a critical eye. More on that to come. <clears throat> the most recent um, checkup on student writing in the United States was conducted by the National Assessment on Educational Progress in 2011. The nation's report card said that less than one third of 12th graders met or exceeded the proficient level for writing performance, where proficient is defined as, quote, competency over a challenging subject matter, including subject matter knowledge and application of such knowledge. Less than a third of 12th graders met that proficient writing performance in our most recent, even though it's a decade old, our most recent checkup on student writing in the United States. And that Again, taking a deeper dive in the literature led me to a quotation from Hunt all the way back in 1975. I thought it was so well said, I wanted to include it here. Hunt wrote, written language is cumbersome, difficult, mechanically time-consuming, and hopelessly limited. Given a choice between writing and dictating, I, a teacher of writing, choose to employ the resources of the spoken word as opposed to the written one. And I think English teachers, at least everywhere, will identify with this quotation a little bit, that writing is, when it's done well, is very difficult and cumbersome and time-consuming. And there's a, <coughs> excuse me, there's a disconnect between the college students Whitford writes about who think they've got it under control, no, no further instruction needed, versus an experienced teacher of writing who sees a disconnect. And here, again, the quotation alludes to the power of the spoken word. So that led me, again, to more research about audio. There's a great study from Gould and Day in 2013 that said, despite the benefits of audio-based feedback being clearly expressed by students in the first four questions of the study survey, a significant minority, 27%, stated they would prefer not to have audio feedback for their work. So we have a, an experienced teacher of writing saying the spoken word really works. And then again, a disconnect where at least a, a, around a third of students prefer not to have audio feedback uh, for writing instruction and so, or, or, or any kind of instruction. And so, uh, this is contested. There isn't a clearly defined best practice for using audio in the classroom and not certainly for writing instruction. Thus, I decided to study this issue as uh, my master's project. So here's the methodology I devised. I wanted a pre-test, post-test experimental design with a control group. So uh, more about that to come, but the tool that I used to measure 
students' perceptions of the usefulness and value of the feedback they received is the intrinsic motivation inventory developed by Macaulay, Duncan, and Tammy from 1989. And that tool has been validated uh, many times over. And the, uh, the statistical test that I used to measure the responses of students was a t-test of independent samples. And my hypothesis was that audio-based feedback would increase students' perceptions that the feedback they receive is useful. So what did the experiment look like? The control group received written feedback and the experimental group received the audio-based feedback, which ended up being personalized screencast videos of 10 to 25 minutes in length each. Um, and as a teacher, I really, you know, again, that hypothesis, I really thought this was going to be valuable. Every kid was going to get at least 10 minutes of individual one-to-one -one instruction that used audio as, as its main method. And there was a video component as well, um, uh, you know, instead of just audio. So, uh, because it was a screencast video. So here is what happened as the results. Audio based feedback was not perceived by students as more valuable than written feedback. And I'd like to dive into this slide really closely. This graph shows the difference of means per question uh, on that inventory I spoke about earlier. And so you can see in the experimental group, after they received their feedback for each one of these prompts about believing writing, thinking it's useful, thinking that this is valuable, that you'd be willing to do it again, many of these categories dipped you know more study is needed but it, it possibly audio feedback had the reverse impact uh, rather than increasing perception a decreased perception and oh when the con when it increased in some of these categories over here you can see that the control group that received written feedback valued the feedback more than the experimental group so just graphically, it looks like the hypothesis uh, is, you know, if, that we have to fail to reject the null. Um, however, I will say uh, that we'll look at this with a critical eye. When, when you, you know, you might say it really had a lot to do with what I might have said in the audio-based feedback. And I want to be clear here. I did not follow a script because I really wanted to respond authentically to students, but I did follow a pattern. The literature was clear that students like an affable, upbeat tone to audio. So I really tried in these screencast videos to accentuate the positive aspects of student writing, to be generous in you know, the, the, my word choice and, and in, in encouraging the students while also you know, using the opportunity to critique their work and offer instruction. I tried to be as upbeat as possible and keep things positive and brief, um, but the results fell where they may. Audio-based feedback did not significantly increase students' perceptions of writing as useful, and they were the results of the t-test. So some conclusions and recommendations. Um, obviously, I, I hope it's obvious that future research is needed and I think the best research design to, for that would be a mixed method study so that participants uh, can do more than just reveal quantitative data. To interview the students, to hear narrations of their perceptions would be very valuable. Um, a second recommendation I have would be to correlate the participants' perceptions of the feedback and the grade they receive on the assignment. I suspect that some of the, like a, like a coefficient of this experiment is that students might have been disappointed in the grades that they received. Some, some participants might have been disappointed in the grades that they received, and that affected the usefulness of any feedback that they got. Also, in the literature, it's clear that podcasts in an educational setting, any kind of audio in, in, in an educational setting, should be participatory. It's a back and forth between listener and speaker. And I think a, a mistake that the present study makes, that this study makes, is 
having it be only teacher giving feedback to student rather than recording, for example, a session, a discussion of the teacher and the student talking about their their essay, the, the essay under discussion. Finally, the study from Gould and Day uh, found that about a third of students, remember, about a third of students just didn't want audio-based feedback in that study in the first place. So I think in future iterations of, of this study of trying to figure out the best way to include audio as a feedback tool would be to give students more choice up front, more choice, more voice. If you think you'd want audio-based feedback, provide it. And if you're opposed to it for whatever reason, try written feedback. Um, these are the references that I used in research, and I hope that this provides you know new light and knowledge in audio-based feedback. Um, for schools and teachers. Thank you very much, everybody. Really appreciate it.